be pretty honest, but toward the end, Chris Clark, Logan Cunnison, and Aiden Sneed had a good battle for that podium spot. Went down to the wire, and I think today I'm expecting a couple other guys to be in that battle for the podium. That's what we want to see. So our final race of the weekend, this is a North America Talent Cup, equally prepared Aprilia 250 GP2s. Let's go racing. And the 95 gets the jump. That's Aiden Sneed. So he's going to try to pinch off the seven of DeMario coming in. No, DeMario is able to use that pole position to get the lead into the chicane. And leads them out as well. And now starting to open up as everyone else is battling for position. These bikes are just small enough and just slow enough where we did see some passing in the chicane only in this division. Look how close it is. As they come through uh, turn two and three over the uh, the hill there, we saw, didn't we, earlier in the weekend, just how quick uh, and how easily Alessandro De Mario seems to be able to get into his rhythm. And that will be on the minds of the uh, other competitors. Aiden Sneed doing his best to hang on, but uh, at the moment, it's De Mario out front. And I think that's exactly what De Mario wants to do. He's had to pace all week. Yesterday, he kind of got caught up in that battle, and, and luckily he was able to get away. And you can see Aiden Sneed really has his head down trying to close that gap back up. Shout out to Suahib Salem, who had a crash earlier in the weekend after showing some fast laps in both practice and qualifying. And he's got himself back up, was in the number three spot early in this one. So starting to rebuild his program after the crash. They had DeMario down on the first lap of yesterday's race. They pushed him as far back to third, then he quickly retook the lead and took off from there. This time he wants to lead it from wire to wire and he's starting to stretch it and Michael, what's impressive again, these bikes are identical, so this kind of a gap early says a lot about the rider. Yeah, the bikes are all uh, identically prepared. Uh, they can make a few little changes uh, to gearing, of course, uh, the rider positions and, and things like that. And Roger, we talked about it earlier in the weekend as well. Uh, so oh, one of the riders running wide at the waterfall there. Even the smallest little tweak, like a handlebar position, you get that elbow uh, that just happens to uh, be out there in the wind. Drag resistance, wind resistance, everything that minimizes the wind resistance will make a massive difference on these little machines. Very little horsepower. Yeah, especially on these bikes. I mean, you'll see how well all these riders are trying to get tucked in, getting behind that bubble, trying to get it more aerodynamic as possible. And you'll see some of the, even though there's some weight rules and try to make it more even, there's only a certain amount that they can put on there. But you can tell the, the littler guys definitely have a little bit more top speed. That's the 95 of Sneed in second, trying to make a breakaway and get away from that hornet's nest of a pack. Chris Clark on the 27 is one of the riders of the podium battle yesterday has arrived as well. And Salem, who as I mentioned had a crash earlier in the weekend, he's back up to pace. And this should be good between this pack. And interestingly, uh, some of the names that we're seeing, they were also out on the uh, Mini Cup by Motul yesterday, Jesse Shedden, who's currently in that fifth position. And uh, Suhaib Salem, uh, I believe uh, his brother Mehdi uh, Salem was out there as well. So he's keeping it in the family. So there's some names that I'm definitely familiar with, Logan Cunnison uh, as well. Hayden Meng has been in that championship before. So as we've talked about, uh, guys, throughout this weekend and throughout the season, there really is a natural ladder of progression. And it's great to see that the North American uh, Talent Cup has uh, been added on to two or three rounds of Motul. America's already impressive roster of categories. Uh, and this pack has caught Aiden Sneed. Now we got an eight rider battle for the podium. <laughs> eight rider battle for the podium. Quote of the weekend there, Roger. And that really sums up how great the action has been in this class. DeMario got away yesterday, he's getting away today. But this group, this is unbelievable racing right now. And Sneed of the 95 has to deal with seven riders setting him up for a pass. And I think one of the things that's really interesting to me, as I said, this is a tried and tested formula. A lot of people say, well, why don't they give them more practice sessions? Why do they just go practice straight into qualifying and then straight into racing? Because a huge lunge on the inside passes three riders, and he somehow got it stopped. The reason is, Roger, I think you'll probably agree. Uh, I think Alberto Puig, who, uh, of course, was himself a former 500cc Grand Prix uh, rider and Grand Prix winner, uh, he was very much instrumental in a lot of the European uh, championships that run like this. And he said, no, 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 we want these riders to learn to race, and that is why the format is two races and as you can see these guys are learning a heck of a lot more by going bar to bar with each other yeah and also just the learning experience for everything that goes into getting these riders here with their families put into it if you have a bad first race it's you know we had this other race today and just the experience that they're getting battling with each other is, is something that uh, is going to really move them up in their career. I'll tell you whose experience is paying off. So Jesse James Shedden, who already has built a bit of a reputation for his performances on the minis, 
only seventh yesterday, a little underwhelming, but he has come through this pack and made it all the way up to second, so that's a big improvement there, Michael. Yeah, big improvement, uh, and I know yesterday down there on the uh, the mini track, he is one of the, the front runners in that series, and I guess right, we've talked about riders jumping from Junior Cup to Twins, jumping from a little Lavalle with two or three gears, uh, a little 110, 160cc machines onto these, this is a massive difference, power to weight ratio, and also the weight of these bikes, very, very different. I just wonder whether maybe that affected Jesse a little bit yesterday. Today, of course, no need to ride the Avali, it's full focus on this Aprilia Challenge. Yeah, I mean, it's a huge difference. The track, for one, is so much bigger compared to the Ovali one. So you go, you know, do the Ovali practice for a couple laps, and then you have to come over here and try to get used to this bike really quick. It's a lot, especially when you're, you're a young rider like they are. You know, you don't have that experience yet. Woo, Shed went way wide onto the curbing on the 99, dealing with the pressure of the 95 of Sneed. And now, Logan Cunnison, who came through the pack to battle for the podium yesterday, has done the exact same thing on the 58. Gonna try the dive bomb on the inside. Does he have enough room on Sneed? Oh, Not quite. Oh. It's happening again. That's Salem that, uh, that, that made the, the, the Two laps there. in a row. Yeah, yeah, two laps in a row. He is a demon on the brakes. Man, you would think you could not get the bike stopped in time, but he's done it twice and does not make any contact. You see the red gear on him, the red leathers, so you can pick him out. And this is just playing into the hands of DiMario, isn't it? He now has uh, a huge lead. It's uh, nearly five seconds, 4.9 seconds uh, as they uh, head with five laps to go. And Ah, there it is. Yeah, incredible, incredible. Music to the ears of the number seven. And then uh, look behind, it looks like Jesse James Shedd is now trying to stretch that elastic for second place. What he needs now is Sneed, Cunnison and Salem just to punch hell out of each other and just allow him to uh, escape in second place. Cunnison doesn't want to let him go. I think he's slipped by Sneed as well into the third place spot. And he's going to try to keep Jesse James Shedden in the picture. There it is, the 99 of Shedden looking to shed that pack that he has been mired in pretty much the entire race. Yes, it is Cunnison in the 58, and that'll push Sneed into fourth. You know he's not gonna be happy about that. And then Salem is in that fight as well. You see him in the black and red leathers. Uh, it's been so fun, the kind of racing these kids have given us. Hey, maybe a little bit less experience and less patience leads to more entertainment also. Yeah, now uh, I'm ever the optimist and uh, looking at the lap times now that Jesse James Shedden is in a bit of clear air. He is a tenth and a half underneath the time. The fastest first sector of anybody. It's a 4.9 second advantage. It's a tall order. He's going to have to find probably a second a lap. Could he catch him? I admire the optimism. That yeah. is impressive. I, unless there's a mistake or, or something, I don't see him, you know, ended up getting into the, the 57s or the, or the low 58s, but, you know, we're going to find out. It, I, you know one thing, he's going to try his best. Yeah, this is his best opportunity because, as you were alluding to, Michael, now everyone behind him is battling as we see Salem again with that hotline way down to the inside and somehow able to get it stopped. Now Logan Cunnison's starting to make this break. You'll see him being a smaller guy. When he comes on this front straightaway, he's going to make that gap up on uh, Jesse Shedd by the time they get to that first chicane. There he is on the 58. Can barely see the top of the helmet and full tuck underneath the windscreen. Then the 95 is Sneed. And then Salem on the 29. And, yeah, talking to some of the dads slash oh. mechanics. Whoa. Yeah, they did say rider weight and size is probably the biggest difference on these motorcycles because you cannot do anything different as far as horsepower goes. You can do suspension clicker adjustments, gearing, and as you were saying, Michael, just ergonomic changes. So you, you do have to balance the weight. They'll add some weight to the bike for lighter riders, but they'll only add so much. So if you're extremely light, you'll still end up with a lighter package overall. Yeah, they have uh, put in a balancing rule, which uh, certainly does put a combined rider uh, and uh, motorcycle combined weight. But as you said, uh, you are still going to see the odd rider fastest. I always remember looking back and watching Danny Pedrosa. MotoGP doesn't have a weight limit, and his bike was always a rocket ship. They are trying to make this as fair as possible so that the rider talent can shine through. And you can see this, can't you, Roger? We've got, as you said, a 16-wheeler, an eight-rider fight for the podium. <laughs> and we do have riders of different statures. Yeah, and, and also just... You know, these riders are learning their racecraft, and, you know, you're going to start figuring that out, you know, in these smaller classes. And just, the, you know, I keep talking about just being put in these race situations more and more and just, just learning. There's not a replacement for, for track time and, and racing with other riders who are, who are better than you or just as good as you. Chris Clark, that was the rider using the 
inside on the 27. He had been shuffled all the way back. He was in the podium battle earlier, went all the way back to seventh. Now he's up to sixth. So it has gone back and forth with these riders. There's the 27 of Clark. Going to move his way back toward the top five. And again, even though he was about 10 bike lengths behind, Salem's still thinking about making that move <laughs> at the waterfall. I could watch him all day long. He's great on the brakes, brilliant hey, style. Hey, they're trying to make a name for themselves. He's advertising the teams, I'm good on the brakes. Sign anything, me. Anything top rack, Razgatlioglu can do, I can do as well. Great to see as uh, DeMario now with a five-second lead. But Jesse James Shedden matches him. I think you're right, Roger. Uh, it's just too much of a tall order now for uh, Jesse James. And uh, DeMario just really now has to not put a wheel wrong. But it's a massive advantage to lead from the front at such a young age. That's a lot of pressure. Yeah, and just be able to get away and not have to get caught up in these battles. And then you have, don't have to get risk getting in to somebody else and just focus on on your own race and you know props to jesse though i mean he's kind of been off the pace a little bit this weekend and you know to come here today and be so much quicker that, that's pretty impressive to see a kid be able to step up that much alessandro demario here on the seven lead is still five seconds did the damage early he had one bad moment during the weekend he actually had been shuffled back to third in our first race yesterday morning and crash trying to pass two riders in one turn and then the race was actually red flagged for a different crash and restarted later in the day he didn't have that crash the second time around and was able to get away with the win and he's looking to do it again so a little bit of a lesson learned for him and he's not going to throw it away this time two and a half laps to go that's an intense battle for third position it looks barring a mistake as i said that the first two are uh, more or less uh, signed sealed and almost delivered for demario and shedden but still any one of four or five riders a big long look over the shoulder and uh, not a single person in sight and i wonder whether that is a bit of a surprise for demario maybe expected to be run a bit closer there is shedden he's got daylight now back and it looks as though it's uh, kunison and sneed uh, that have managed just to edge a little bit clear of clark and Selim, who again is looking on the inside <laughs> And, uh, oh, he oh. just intimidated him. He got the move done. He got the move done there just by showing a wheel. Great stuff. Okay, Ghost Rider. He just knew it was there and couldn't make the corner. So that finally paid off. We, we saw Salem with that dive bomb to the inside lap after lap. Didn't make any passes until now. And we expected this podium battle to be raging. It's actually a little bit further back where the battling is right now with the 95 and the 27. That's Clark and Sneed. But it's for fourth and fifth. They've got to get motoring to get back to those podium positions. It's Connison in third and Shedden in second have checked out on them. So we'll watch this. Clark goes by. Sneed gonna try to get him back. Ah, this is so fun with these young riders. Anything can happen at any time. You know they're gonna push the limits. And that's what's so cool about watching these young kids race like this is seeing them try to set up their passes, see them use their strategy and, and you know, set up the rider for the, for the next lap. You know, you see them try to set up a move and then the next lap they do it. And, uh, you know, it's just cool to see them, how much different they are from yesterday's race and so much quicker today already. Yeah, and a shout out also to uh, all of the riders here, because if we look down the list, uh, uh, some of the riders towards the rear of the field, Jack Beaudry, uh, also uh, Matthew Chapin, Dylan Singh, they're all still making personal improvements. So there are success stories and development stories throughout the field. Yeah, uh, Jack Beaudry had multiple crashes throughout the weekend. Uh, they were scrambling just to get the bike fixed. It was a pretty big one yesterday. So awesome to see him get back on the grid, uh, running in 11th place right now. Every lap they get to turn on this track is a lap where they learn something and you wouldn't normally get riders this young in Moto America to race on the full-size track. So this is actually a level below our typical Junior Cup class. So they're all gaining a little bit of extra experience they wouldn't have had in previous years. So here it is, Alessandro DiMario ready to be crowned a double winner this weekend if he can just hold on over the final lap. And a small percentage, about to be the white flag now, and here it comes. One to go for a weekend sweep for Alessandro DiMario. And Jesse James Shedden, what a rebuild. Seventh place, kind of underwhelming performance just based on the talent that we know he has yesterday. But he's right back in that podium battle. And these two, Sneed and Clark, Sneed the 95, Clark the 27. 
They're going to battle all the way down yep. to the checkered flag. They battled every lap all weekend. They battled yesterday for the podium. Now today they're going to battle for fourth and fifth. Yesterday, Chris Clark came out on top of that battle with second. So we'll see if Snead can, can come out on top today. Snead able to hold Clark off. Clark tried the outside. Didn't quite work. This is far from done, even though it's the last lap. Plenty of passing opportunities in the final moments as Shedden and Cunnison are looking for the podium. Clark on the outside again. Not quite enough. Oh, he and it almost paid off. Though. Yeah. That was that setup that you were talking about. Now we'll see coming out of here, you know, this next little short shoot. Sometimes on these littler bikes, we can see them do a little drafting through here and up over the hill. See, look at the 27 in the draft. Can he use it around the outside? He's all the way on the left side of the racetrack. I think the draft paid off. Chris Clark back around. Sneed. Now Sneed's going to go from outside to inside. And look at the pack behind him. He's caught him. <laughs> That's another one of these one of five, six rider packs. They just swapped it again. Sneed and Clark. Spectacular racing. This is for fourth. Cunnison all alone looking for back to back podiums. Shedden in second. And your leader, Alessandro DeMario. Nearly has the checker flag in sight. Here we go. One last trip down the waterfall. And you know there's going to be some passing here with these kids. Checkered flag. Now literally he can see it. And it's going to go back to back the weekend sweep. Remember this name. Alessandro DeMario takes it in the North America Talent Cup. Shedden coming across the line. A huge improvement from yesterday's seventh in second. Cunnison in third. And there's the battle to the line. Sneed edges Clark. Great racing again here on these 250cc Aprilia machines. And now they're revving it on the look victory how, lap celebration. Look how excited these mm -hmm. kids are. It's so cool, to, so cool to see the excitement. And this is where it starts. These kids come here and, you know, they start at the old volleys and they come to these Moto America races. And they, they that's where they want to be in the future. So they get to come here. And it's almost like when we get to go to the Moto GP racing race. You know, this is kind of... They get to come here and they get to see their heroes and, and where they want to be one day. And you said before when Kayla Yakov took her first win in Junior Cup earlier today, this is the moment right here, that cool down lap celebration. Yeah, that's that's the best moment is, you know, after the checkered flag on that cool down lap, knowing that you won. I mean, that's a feeling that, you know, I think when you retire, that's probably the number one feeling that, that you miss. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what you put all the work in and all the sacrifice and everything that goes into it for for that feeling after you win on the, on the cool down lap. And shout out to the fans for sticking around. As even uh, Danilo Petrucci mentioned, it was hot out there. And he thanked the fans for sticking around. And uh, they get to cheer these riders on their cool down lap. And maybe these fans are going to remember the first time they saw Alessandro DiMario take a win in Moto America. Gets it done by three and a half seconds, which is a pretty big gap in a spec series class. Jesse James shed in a nice rebuild after seventh yesterday, ends up second. And Logan Cunnison, who was third yesterday, is third again today. Aiden Sneed and Chris Clark, if we ran seven races or eight, they'd probably battle through all of them. They battled all weekend. And there's your entire field. Dylan Singh, 13th. Matthew Chapin, 12th. Jack Beaudry, 11th. Logan Monk was 10th. And all these kids having a good time to enjoy this, getting to ride the full racetrack here in Moto America, courtesy of this North America Talent Cup. And we'll even send Michael Hill down to the podium. We'll give him the full experience once the top three are ready to go. We can thank the teams that helped them get there. And you know that the families are certainly a big part of that as well. So pretty simple motorcycles. I was talking to some of the dads slash mechanics yesterday morning. They were talking about, oh, we, you can change the jetting in the bikes. You don't hear that term <laughs> very often anymore with carburetors. Uh, these are uh, machines, yes, for road racing, but they're designed to be very low cost and very simple. And there's just a few tuning things that you can do. Uh, gearing, which can actually affect the chassis and the wheelbase. And you can uh, slide the forks up make the bike a little bit more twitchier, more stable. Suspension adjustments, but not a lot in it. So this is designed to show off the rider, not the bike. So good job by DeMario. And I think that's awesome to come here and make it a spec class so then it's not about who spends the most money mm -hmm. and everybody can make it affordable and it's even. And, uh, you know, there's no excuses at the end. 
It's one of the big things I learned coming on board with Moto America last year, that a, a big part of this series is not just to have superstars in Moto America, but maybe plant seeds for Moto America riders going overseas. We're giving these riders the experience and talent right now. This is really a cool experience. Is that is that Danilo Petrucci yeah. coming down? Oh, that's awesome. All right, we're going to send it down to Michael Hill, and we'll get this podium celebration started. That is awesome to see at the Ridge. Hi, uh, yeah, thanks, guys. I'm down here, and uh, big smiles uh, in Superbike for Danilo, and even bigger smiles because Alessandro De Mario. Uh, we see you down here, Danilo, very quickly, uh, just before we do our podium interviews. Italians on the podium in Superbike and Italians on the uh, podium in the North America Talent Cup. A great day for Italy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really happy for him because uh, I just met him uh, yesterday. I know there was this uh, young guy from Italy. And uh, for me, it's really a big pleasure, big joy when I see these kids racing. They are so joyful. Uh, I like a lot to see the smile in their eyes. It's, uh, it's uh, really, really nice. I hope uh, him uh, the best, and uh, I, I will follow him. Oh, for sure. Good job. We'll see you at Laguna. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Right, we'll let these riders just get their helmets off down here. Big smiles from all three of them. It was a really, really good race. Alessandro De Mario is uh, down here. Jesse James Shedden and uh, Logan Cunison as well. Uh, let's uh, get in there if we can. They're just giving me a little fist bump and congratulations. Big smiles as uh, I'll try and uh, squeeze my way in here. Alessandro uh, Complimente, uh, what a fantastic race that was. And uh, congratulations from the one and only Danilo Petrucci. Uh, great job. You have a new fan. Thank you. Um, yeah, the race was pretty good. Uh, my dashboard stopped working. And I didn't know how many laps were left. But I, tried, I kept pushing. And, the, and I uh, won. Nice, big smiles, big smiles. Come on, round of applause down here. There's a lot of people uh, still watching. I'm just going to move across now if we can and speak to Jesse Shedden, who has been on double duty this weekend, this young man. Uh, you've been spinning a lot of laps on the mini track uh, and now on the big track as well. And uh, you've got to be super happy, mate, with that podium. A great job. Uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a pretty smooth race. Um, I started uh, third row on the grid. Um, but first lap, I just push as hard as I can against second place and try to hold my race. Good job. Well, another valuable 20 points then for Jesse James Shedden. Uh, he's sharing the wins, of course, with Alessandro De Mario uh, in this uh, North America Talent Cup. And we come along then to uh, the number 58 on the Aprilia. Logan, uh, tell us about your race. Another podium and another 16 points. Good job, Logan. Since yesterday I w got third, I just wanted to keep pushing it so I can, like, get second. But... I kept sliding, I had no rear tire, and like, I'm just happy. Yeah, you should be, you should be very happy and very proud of yourself. As I said, uh, ladies and gents, uh, that is the podium. Uh, we are going to get these guys up there very quickly. From me, Michael Hill, it's been a pleasure to be back here at the Ridge Motorsports Park. Uh, make sure you're with us in a couple of weeks' time when we go to WeatherTech Raceway. I've had an absolute blast, and uh, that is a very refreshing uh, bit of water there. Thank you, Ryan Snooks. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I'm going to go and have a shower and uh, enjoy uh, the sunshine here. I'm going to hand back to the boys, but uh, we'll see you next time at WeatherTech Raceway. It has been a brilliant, brilliant weekend. Stay with us on Moto America Live Plus. Thanks, Michael Hill. He just got a shower. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a shocking one at that. We'll give you the uh, remaining schedule of everything we'll have coming up in Moto America for 2022. Uh, you can see the races that have already been completed, including here at the Ridge. We're going to Laguna Seca. That's WeatherTech Raceway. Then Brainerd in Minnesota, Pittsburgh International Raceway, uh, just outside of Pittsburgh in Wampum, Pennsylvania, New Jersey Motorsports Park, and we'll wrap it up like we did last year at the beautiful Barber Motorsports Park outside of Birmingham, Alabama. Going to be an awesome uh, championship. Even the ones where the points have gotten a little out of hand, the racing has been spectacular. And you know, in road racing, you're only one moment away from those points tightening back up. Yeah, and right now, you know, we're right at like the halfway part of the season. So it's kind of cool to see how these championships are shaking up. And the racing this year has been awesome in all the classes and all the championships are so close. I can't remember a year where every class was just about this close. Yep, and we're putting more star stars into this series as we speak with this new North America Talent Cup sanctioned by the FIM. And you see those top three riders right there, DeMario, Shedden, and Cunnison, stars of the future. And we also saw the stars of the present today as Jake Gagne sweeps the weekend in Superbike. Great racing throughout, and we thank you for joining us here on Motor America Live Plus. We'll be back in two weeks from WeatherTech Raceway, Laguna Seca. Yeah, Kayla Yako finally breaks through and gets that win in uh, Junior Cup. That was very, very exciting. For Roger Hayden and Michael Hill, I'm Jason Wigand. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in two weeks from Laguna.